While Nikki Haley makes it official, Mike Pence is acting like someone who might make his plans for 2024 official soon. The former vice president spoke at an event in Iowa Wednesday, where the caucuses are the first test in the GOP nominating process. He also confirmed what we reported on Tuesday, that he will fight a subpoena from the special counsel investigating former President Trump's efforts to overturn the 2020 election. It's unprecedented. Uh, never before in American history has a, a vice president uh, been summoned uh, to appear in court to testify against a president with whom they serve. Though Pence cites his role as vice president, the former vice president is likely to lean on the protections of the Senate and the Constitution's speech or debate clause, which shields congressional lawmakers from certain questioning if they can prove they were acting in an official capacity. Pence will argue he falls under that category since the vice president also acts as president of the Senate. For more, let's bring in CBS News political reporter Aaron Navarro in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Aaron, what did we hear from Vice President Pence in his remarks today that suggests or gives us any clue about how he might shape his campaign or, or at least one direction he might go in? Hi, John. Thanks for having me. The main thing I took away from Vice President Pence's remarks today was a nod to the quote-unquote culture war rhetoric that we've seen really take front and center with the Republican Party, uh, specifically on the issue of education and quote-unquote parents' rights. We saw this in 2021 where Virginia Governor Glenn Youngkin, who kind of built off those frustrations after the COVID lockdowns. We've seen Florida Governor Ron DeSantis talk about this when addressing sexuality and how sex is taught in schools. And today, Mike Pence in Iowa and in Minnesota earlier, and that's not by accident. He's tapping into outcry from parents here. Uh, in the Linmar School District, uh, parents are upset with a school policy regarding supporting students that are questioning their gender, that are transgender, and are not informing parents about it. This is another way Mike Pence can kind of tap into that Republican issue that has really gotten uh, steam and, mo and momentum among the Republican base. And Aaron, how uh, was he then um, uh, received uh, out there as the uh, as the primary field begins to take shape or take shape before official announcements anyway? He was received pretty well. This is the room he was in, obviously empty now, but it was packed with supporters, people interested in what he had to say. And the interesting thing about Mike Pence, uh, compared to some of the other presidential contenders that could get in that are not named uh, Donald Trump, is people know Mike Pence. He has high name ID and hypothetical polls. And I talked to one voter before this event started. I just asked him, what do you think of Mike Pence? Take a listen to what he said. The strength that uh, Mike Pence brings is that he has a really close connection with Iowa conservatives. And uh, we're talking about the evangelical. Uh, he's a straight shooter. Uh, he finds records in his home. He just tells us. So what voters told me today signals to me that there is an openness to looking at someone other than President Trump looking at this presidential primary here in Iowa. All right, Aaron Navarro in Cedar Rapids. Thanks so much.